This is the Quanta S1G 1U server, and it might be the greatest 1U server the internet doesn't know about. This is the Quanta S1G chassis, and in particular, this specific server is the S51G. And this is a Quanta server, and what makes this special, you can see how deep it is. It actually it can accept 12 three and a half inch internal hard drives. And what that means for us on this channel is decentralized storage. Uh, if you guys know me very well, you know that I've been into SC Prime a lot. Uh, I've been a provider on that network for a year. I've been a provider on storage for a couple years. Uh, I've even been uh, done burst mining back in 2017, 2018. I've always been real big into hard drive based uh, crypto operations. And so recently Flux announced uh, Project Thunder and it's gonna have three tiers. So it's gonna be, there's gonna be a 20 terabyte tier, a 100 terabyte tier, and a 500 terabyte tier. Uh, now those are subject to change but that's currently uh, what they're kind of working with right now. It's all going to be on the Cumulus nodes. And so what I've set out to do is search for a 1U server that I can run a Flux node on, and let's see if we can get to the 100 terabyte of storage capacity. Uh, I realize I'm not going to get to the 500 terabyte. And so what I'm looking to do, right now I'm running storage, and SE Prime, all from uh, Asuster NASA's. I'd like to get those migrated into 1U servers, and I'm actually gonna move them all into these. So I picked this up. There's actually a seller right now on eBay uh, that has a bunch of these from a data center. Do searching online, you can't find anything about these. They're not on Quanta's website. There's really no specs for it. There's one dock that you can find for it. And that's pretty much it. So purchased it, kind of going blind, really not knowing what I was going to get. Um, now, one thing I will mention is when it arrived, it was screaming. And what happened was uh, whoever owned this before in the data center actually cut uh, all the fan. I pulled all the fans out and they actually cut the PWM wire off. So all the fans were spinning at 100% and they were screaming. So I went ahead and replaced them with these Arctic uh, S4028 6K fans. So these are same dimensions, 40 millimeter square, 28 millimeter depth. And these are 6,000 RPM fans. And you can hear it now. Uh, the server's up and running and it's pretty quiet. Uh, even at full 6,000 RPM, it's still pretty quiet for a server. So we're going to go ahead and get the cover off and kind of show you what it looks like. Uh, if we look at the front, you can see it's very basic. There's really, there's no drive bays or anything in the front. You spin around back here. Show you the ports in the back. It'd probably be a little bit dark here. Uh, but basically what we're dealing with is uh, we've got four USBs. We've got a serial connection, a VGA. We've got two one gig network ports. We have a 10 gig network port. We have an SFP plus that we could use for an additional 10 gig network or a fiber connection. And we also have IPMI, which is huge. So let's go ahead and get the cover off. Set that to the side. And what you can see what we're working with here is we've got 12 three and a half inch bays. Uh, these basically unscrew and they kind of become hot swappable in a sense that you just mount mount the drive to this, slide it into the SATA ports. Um, there are basically two SAS controllers on this thing. So uh, eight of the drives run off one, four run off of another. Um, and here you can see the fans. So these are the fans replaced. There's five 40 mil 
fans, and then there's also two power supply specific fans. Uh, the power supplies are the Mini Delta, uh, 460 watts, I believe. We've got the CPU that's in here right now. I'm actually going to upgrade this. So this is a V2 series of the E5 2600. So this will be getting replaced with a 2697 V2, which is the 12 core, 24 thread. Right now, this has a 10 core, 20 thread in it. And we've got, right now we have eight gigs of RAM. There's two four gig sticks in here but there are eight slots, so we'll be upgrading the RAM as well. Um, here you can see there is a uh, OPC uh, mezzanine card connector. Obviously we're not using that. There is also a full length PCIe connector. Now one thing to keep in mind with this specific server, you can't boot off of this. I did try an M.2 to PCIe adapter to try to run the OS off of this, I wasn't able to do that. So just keep that in mind. However, when I was, if I booted off USB, when it was in, it got detected in Ubuntu. So the port works, everything's good. You just can't boot off of it. Uh, two uh, redundant power supplies. And then uh, just moving over, there are basically three little mini ducks here. So there's this one for the power supply, which is a hard plastic. This one's kind of like a cardboard paper type material and basically just builds an air funnel there. Um, it's not the best design, but I mean, it works. It certainly moves the airflow uh, over the CPU and out the back. And then over here, you can see we have two empty SATA slots. And what we have here is we have a power pin, a three pin, three pin power plug for a SATA DOM. So on this specific unit, what you'll notice is right now I just have one SSD in here. I've got 11 empty bays. The reason I have this is for flux, we need you know, around 220 gigs of high speed on our system drive. And SATA DOMs really only go up to 128. So on this specific unit, what I'm gonna do is we're going to run this 500 gig SSD for the OS and then that leaves us 11 drive bays that we're going to be able to put in uh, you know we can go 12 terabyte we can go 18 terabyte depending on how big we want to go um, if we go with 12 terabytes that's still going to put us you know over that 100 terabyte mark that we kind of want to be at for that medium uh, we're not going to get anywhere close to the 500 in a 1U chassis, obviously. Uh, but I don't, I'm not aiming for the 20 terabyte. I'm aiming more for the 100 terabyte. And what I would like to do in those other units will actually be running a SATA DOM for the storage server and for the SC Prime server. So the OS can run off of that. And then we can load those up with uh, some nice hard drives for providing storage to those networks. So eventually I'll have three of these in my rack uh, serving, one will be serving Flux storage, one will be serving SC Prime storage, the other will be storing, serving storage storage. So that's kind of the idea with these. Uh, I will link the eBay store, that, or the eBay listing down below. And that's pretty much it for this video. So let me know your thoughts, let me know. Now I know Quanta does make an updated kind of version of this that they do. You can find listings, you can find firmware, you can find all that for that server. Uh, this specific model though, you can't, even the specific chassis, you can't really find anywhere. So I wasn't really able to do any type of firmware updates or anything to it. That's the only drawback. However, it's a really nice setup, it is long right because of the 12 drives up front but overall this is an amazing piece uh, to be able to run at home and only consume a one use slot on the rack my rack space is very minimal i just run a rack in my closet and so trying to condense those down to one use servers is critical for me and this is going to do wonders for me so so happy i was able to come across this piece 
and we will hopefully be building out two more of these.